I didn't do anything different, or not that I noticed. Here we are. We're live, and we're going to see what's new with Undertale. Welcome back, everyone. Everyone who is hearing this broadcast, welcome to Signum Academy on Twitch. Where did we leave off last time? We're in the neutral route. I know that. So the first quarter or so of this huge video that we've been watching the playthrough on. I think we just got to the lab, so I think this is about right. Meeting Dr. Alphys. What do you notice about Dr. Alphys? Uh, let's, let's get a little flavor of this place. Well, Dr. Alphys looks kind of anxious. She has a very, very messy workspace. Nothing like me. Uh, very organized over here. But in Alphys' lab, you've got stacks of bowls of soup. Uh, you've got post-it notes all over the computer screen and piled up all around are what look like scientific papers, but it's not all just work, of course. Alphys has got a love of toys, little objects, little things to fiddle with there. And the most effective distraction of all definitely is a pet. So I've got my cat here. He's always very interested in whatever's going on that has my attention. He feels like he should be the one that has all of the attention. And sure enough, Alphys also has got some dog treats there. And, well, the refrigerator for her. Um, let's get to know this person a little bit, this lab coat wearing dinosaur looking person. All right, so we've upgraded the phone and we've been signed up for the social network now we're officially friends trails off laughing because after all it's awkward talking to someone who doesn't talk back our silent protagonist here is just going and proceeding to take stuff from alphys it's accessing some kind of puzzle in snowden that's why we did a puzzle in snowden a garbage can but it's pretty cute a video feed of your location. So has Alphys been watching us this whole time? Sure looks that way. She's using the bathroom. So meanwhile, we'll just continue to rifle through her things, scientific books. All these books labeled human history. All right, let's read one. A comic of a giant robot fighting a beautiful alien princess. This doesn't strike you as very accurate. Now, we should note here that it's not just any toys and games and things that Alphys is interested in. Of course, Alphys is interested in anime shows and video games, a lot like the one that we're playing, only maybe a little bit more authentically Japanese. Um, this is more of an homage or a, a satire even on the genre but Alphys is interested in the real deal. Alphys, in short, is occupying a well-understood cultural niche, right? A place that is, is sometimes with love and sometimes in disparagement labeled otaku. The otaku culture seems to be what Alphys is all about. That person who is obsessed with, in love with, a huge fan of, of anime, manga, video games from Japan. Let's see. Things like giant robots and such. There's VHSs and DVDs of various cartoons. They're labeled human history, so that's her view of human reality. Uh, chefs flinging pancakes at each other, of course. We can think of that in terms of Dragon Ball Z or one of those sort of anime shows. 
A hideous android running to school with toast in its mouth. Seems like it's late. A lot of school stories, a lot of fantastic events set in a seemingly normal world. A lot of pink goop, a lot of cat ears happening. Alphys hasn't been busy working lately. A clean dress, though, huh? Letters from many monsters. Hmm. All unopened. An incredible invention. This bed folds into an extremely easy to draw box. Ah, uh, I love it. So maybe this one is important to focus on. Uh, easy to draw. Well, I guess at this stage of developing the game, Toby Fox might have been getting a little tired of drawing new things. So maybe a small joke at his own expense there. Um, this promo poster for Metaton's TV premiere. This is different. This is a uh, another aspect of uh, fan culture that we might think about. What do you do when you know a lot of stuff about something and you want to really uh, show off and you want to have fun with all of your knowledge? Well, you've got to have a game show, don't you? You've got to have a trivia contest of some kind, a quiz show or a game show. So Metaton is going to be our character that's standing for all of that fun stuff. Let's just check and see if anyone's out there. Ooh, there may be a viewer out there. If that viewer or those viewers would like to pop in the chat with any comments or questions, we are here for you. Um, if you've played Undertale before and you're noticing something, if you're just watching along and you're seeing something, whatever you might want to say in the chat about this whole strange world of anime and its fans, please don't be shy about dropping thoughts in the chat on Twitch. I should mention, I guess, that uh, while we're watching this, and I'll turn it down a little bit. Maybe it's a little too loud. I don't know. Uh, this whole project that we're into with Signum Academy is uh, very interested in connecting things that you love, you know, with uh, maybe a slightly more academic or just a little bit more in-depth discussion. Maybe not even academic, right? But, huh, Alphys is updating her status as we speak. I know she's unbeatable and she's got a little smiley face emoji. Um, if you recall, uh, it sure looked like this playthrough, our player chose to fight and actually defeat Undyne. So we're not going to get the full story of these characters because we keep um, defeating them, you know, uh, ending their story, cutting off their story in mid, uh, in, in the middle, right? Um, there are other ways to play this game, of course. You can play it in a non-violent way, not defeating the enemies, but allowing them to live and sparing them. And you can see that these characters have a ton of personality just from the dialogue that we're getting here. There's a Tsundere plane. Tsundere, another Japanese cultural tidbit there. Um, and I know we're kind of jumping all over the place, uh, you know, jumping literally in the game here and jumping figuratively from topic to topic. Um, but what I was saying about Signum Academy is that this really only works, or this is supposed to work, in a way that's that's interactive for, for you all out there. And I know that we aren't on a, a meeting where you can talk back um, in the moment here, but, but please do put in your comments and questions in the chat on Twitch. Um, I will one day get my other monitor connected so I can properly monitor the Twitch chat. Um, but honestly, so far I haven't needed to. Uh, I very, very rarely get any comments and questions dropped into the chat box there on Twitch. Um, so I think that's probably a suggestion, uh, at least in the case of 
this game um, that maybe there there just isn't that much interest, you know, out there right now um, around Undertale. And I think, well, that's just, that can't be, first of all. Um, I know that people still like this game and still talk about this game. Um, so we've got to find those people. Um, but also, you know, maybe there's uh, just a, a, maybe a, a matter of uh, preparing for class. That's, that's the issue here, right? Maybe people are feeling like, you know, oh, if what I have to say isn't, um interesting enough or isn't right you know and they're shy about jumping into the discussion but i, I really want this to be open to any comments that are appropriate you know that are related to undertale and that are not gonna be um bad if i read them out loud you know please please go ahead and put them in the chat um and i'll do my best to respond to them so we've jumped our way to find a uh couple of characters here who are living in Hotland. They look really cool. I mean, not like temperature-wise, but they just look so relaxed. Metaton, the most popular star in the underground. He might have two or three dozen members in his fan club. All right. All right, we're up to a couple of viewers, it looks like. If you are willing to say what you think of Undertale, please put it in the chat. We've got a little game, a little mini game here. It's like they don't even want to go to work. It's like people don't want to work hard if they're in danger of being annihilated by this human at any moment. Um... So it's a pretty straightforward game. You're trying to destroy the blocks and shoot through them. You solved it. I'm impressed. You must be a total nerd. There's not a whole lot to that. Um, yeah, that idea of being a nerd versus being cool. Definitely on Toby Fox's radar throughout this game. And maybe there's such a thing as a cool nerd too. And I think Alphys would totally fit that category. As the royal scientist, I have some tricks up my sleeve. I'll hack into the Hotland laser database and take it out. So we have a team member here briefly. Um, Alphys is going to help us deal with some of these puzzles. Oh, it sounds like Charlie's kind of sad. Um, you may recall uh, that at my house here, we've got not only cats, um, but also little babies. Uh, I've got a three-year-old and a two-month-old who is being pretty loud right now. Um, so if he intervenes in our conversation, you'll just have to f excuse me. Um, but here we go. Here's a little bit trickier version of the puzzle with the box. And we got two shots and we figured it out. Well done. Now it looks like we can proceed. And voila. Alphys is ready to explain the puzzle. And where we're getting a lot of this information, another little reminder here, um, thinking about the translation process, in the case of this game, it goes from English to Japanese. In most JRPGs, of course, it would go from Japanese to English or other languages. Um, and a major uh, source for all this information is the Legends of Localization, Book 3, Undertale, which is just a lovely book, um, very well put together, a lot of information, and if you are interested in Undertale, um, it is worth picking up a copy of this book. Uh, it deals, again, specifically with issues of trying to get across as clearly as possible without losing any of the meanings, all of the humor, and and that's one of the hardest things when you're learning another language, you'll see, um, to actually get a joke, to actually understand the humor, takes a ton of, of, of knowledge and work. Um, it's something that you might not notice at all in your first language, but when you're learning a new language, suddenly you notice, suddenly you realize how complicated 
funny things actually are. Uh, and it's a little bit of a stretch, but I think we can see the connection back to Tolkien there pretty clearly, right? We can think about Tolkien in terms of his influence on the genre of role-playing games, Japanese role-playing games, a little bit more indirectly. But in terms of the language itself, the way that Tolkien is interested in language and the way that Toby Fox and his team are interested in language, there's actually something pretty close to connect them there. Um, Tolkien, of course, known more for the drama, maybe, and the fantasy and such. Um, but I think he's also an extremely funny author, um, extremely poetic, of course, and knows a ton about language. And that expresses itself in his humor as well. Um, the kind of thing that you get uh, with, uh, you know, Gandalf first meeting Bilbo and asking him, is it really a good morning? What, what do you mean by that when you say good morning, right? Um, just such a, uh, or Gandalf again, um, playing with the voices of the trolls and using their voices against one another. Um, there's a lot of scary things in those books, right? And there's scary things in this game too, but there's a, a ton of funny things as well. All right, so this is a little bit here where we're in a dark room. Alphys is going to help us out of the dark. Don't worry, I'll hack into the light system and brighten it up. Oh, what? What? It's a cooking show. Welcome, beauties, to the Underground's premier cooking show, Cooking with a Killer Robot. <sighs> Preheat your ovens because we've got a very special recipe for you today. A cake. All right. Now, what is what is going on with the cooking show? Um, well, I'll just leave it as a question for a minute. See if anyone wants to chime in. What is going on with this cooking show? Okay, the Genesis Lazy Duck is saying, no way, you're playing Undertale, that's pretty cool. Playing is a loose term here, Genesis Lazy Duck, if you're still with us. I'm personally not playing, I've got to confess. Um, I am just watching this lovely playthrough from my lovely assistant, Carrot Helper, 100% walkthroughs. Um, I have played Undertale, but I am not currently playing Undertale. I am just just cheating a little bit here so I can focus more on the, the conversation piece. And also because I just, I don't have the technical setup right now to, to actually stream straight from the game. Have you played Undertale? Sounds like you might have. If you have, let me know what you think about this cooking show thing here. And we'll kind of move along through it. Give them a big hand. Again, that pronoun they, them for our character. We need sugar, milk, and eggs. Go for it, sweetheart. This isn't a show about washing your hands, darling. So, that's on Wednesdays. There's a setup um, that we can think about here of... Uh, you know, a really basic puzzle for one thing. Um, but we have seen cooking referred to in this game a few times, right? This game is pretty interested in food, cooking, the ways that those things connect with taking care of other people. So wasn't it a, a pie that Toriel cooked for us? And maybe it was two pies? She called and asked, do, do you like butterscotch or do you like cinnamon? C cinnamon. Oh, we did a perfect job putting all the ingredients there. Milk, sugar, eggs. What a magnificent moment. How could I forget? We're missing the most important ingredient. Chainsaw coming out. Human soul. So this got dark pretty quickly. Oh, 
someone's calling. Wait a second. Couldn't you make a uh, couldn't you use a couldn't you make a substitution in the recipe? Use a different non-human ingredient. Why? What if someone's vegan? So Metaton doesn't get a, a picture for their face. It talks in all capital letters. Um, there is a can of the soul replacement over there. Um, of course, in Japanese, you'd be seeing katakana characters here. That would be the equivalent of sort of robotic capital letters. And okay, this is going to be silly, but there's a little mini game required here. We have one minute to go up and get the can. Better start climbing, beautiful. All right, our genius lazy duck. Oh, Gen Genesis lazy, sorry, Genesis lazy duck. Not, not giving us much on uh, Undertale at the moment, but that's okay. So we're gonna we're gonna get our jetpack on. Here we go. Let's uh, let's skip ahead a bit. Yep, there we are, flying up. So it's a uh, a lot like the battle sequences. Of course, this one is in minigame form. This is giving me a little bit of a headache, so I'm gonna skip through it. Sorry. All right. So Metaton wants to kill us. That's clear but wants to be kind of uh, theatrical about it. I wonder how Metaton baked the cake without a human soul. I guess they used the soul substitute. It's glued to the table. Yeah, we can't actually get it. So let's see what this save point tells us. An ominous structure looms in the distance. You're filled with... That's right, determination. So we can see this thing called the core. That's the core, the source of all power for the underground. Now power is another thing we've been interested in throughout this game. You might think about food as the thing that powers you, right? So maybe they're not that different. Um, but another important form that power takes is wish fulfillment right, which comes about through determination. In the case of humans, at least, the soul is where determination resides. So, we have made it through Hotland, or at least part of it, and we are coming towards the core. Oh, Napsta Bluke wants to be our friend. You gotta, you gotta accept Napsta. Oh, Napsta Luke rejected itself. That's such a shame. An apron. Let's take it. Sure. Got a stained apron. Oh, the art club is meeting. Wow. I think this is a thing that might only happen in a different version of the game. Sorry, I don't remember much about this. But so sorry. Let me see what we have to say about so sorry. I really don't remember this. Yeah, version juggling. So there's a secret battle that features this artist and two doodle bog enemies. Yeah, this is new content uh, in the one of the console versions. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, you're wasting our time a little bit. Sorry. Uh, let's timing based puzzle. Let's jump through it. A lot of platforming here, finding the right way through. <sighs> Laser safe. 
The mouse might one day hack the computerized safe and get the cheese. It fills you with determination. I'm telling you, determination and food are closely related. This running gag with the mouse and the cheese, um, it's always associated with save points, with determination. Oh boy. Talk about running gags. These guards. This is very, very similar to a little gag in Mother 3. You may recall when you're trying to get past the guards. So, again, this person playing decided to fight, and we're in another dark room. Don't worry. My hacking skills have got things covered. Oh, it's a news broadcast. That's right. Good evening, beauties and gentle beauties. This is Metaton reporting live from MTT News. Interesting situation in Hotland. Our correspondents there reporting live. I wonder if you all out there have ever seen a news broadcast like this. This is maybe a little bit of a history uh, lesson at this point. Yeah, have you ever seen a news broadcast like this? Do you ever watch the news? Um, so there's a lot of things about to explode here. Everything in this area is actually a bomb. That present's a bomb. That basketball's a bomb. Um, So making light of, uh, well, the news for one thing, which is awfully uh, stressful these days. Um, but of course, you've got to laugh. Again, this is where humor has some serious applications. Ooh, they missed the defuse zone. Um, humor is one of the last things you learn when you're learning a language. And humor is one of the best ways to deal with a stressful situation. Not always, of course. Sometimes it can frustrate people. But it can diffuse a uh, otherwise seemingly uh, insoluble problem. Right? A problem that doesn't have an obvious solution. Maybe you need to diffuse that situation with humor. Okay. So we've diffused some bombs, and that's the cooking show and the news broadcast. What could be left? Oh man, the spiders again. Yeah, the spiders have been doing a bake sale this whole game. Stock up now. Oof. So we're jumping through some more little puzzles. Another block puzzle. Don't want to show you all the solutions to the puzzles. We want to talk about. Oh man, is this is this the battle with the spiders? Yeah, yeah. There's a mini boss here. I think your taste is too refined for our pastries, don't you, dearie? A mini boss, I say, because again, this character does not get a uh, actual portrait that goes with what they're talking about. Hey, y'all! If you are interested in Undertale, if you have thoughts about Undertale, please put them in the chat. Um, someone out there thinks it's cool that we're playing Undertale. That's cool. Uh, like I said, we're not actually playing. I'm very sorry to um, deceive you. If if I did, it's not intentional. Um, but this fight is really fun. I, again, I don't want to spoil it, so let's let's jump through this fight with Muffet and all of her tea and such. She is a spider person, a uh, monster. She is a lot like a, another optional mini boss in Mother 3 uh, when you fight the uh, robotic maid towards the end of that game. Uh-oh. Is it a play? Is it a musical? Are we about to see a reference to the greatest musical opera event in all of JRPG history? Oh my word, we are. 
Let's just listen in for a sec here. I forgot about this. So Metaton is going to sing to us. If you have thoughts about Undertale, please pop them in the chat because we're, we're kind of winding up for today. So the, the reference here is, of course, not to an actual musical, um, but to an opera scene within a JRPG in the um, Final Fantasy VI, originally released as Final Fantasy III. We have a very similar scene. It's also played for laughs. It's also humorous. Um, not as uh, in your face about it, maybe. This one is, is quite over the top. The kind of lyrics that we're getting here, things like, it'll suck, you're going to die, cry, cry, cry. And wow. Um, but in Final Fantasy VI, that scene is really um, goofy in the moment but has some important uh, references to it later on. The characters in that moment uh, playing their roles, right? We get a kind of role-playing within the role-playing game happening, which is interesting. Um, those characters, of course, are going to develop in, in interesting ways throughout that game and will more closely take on actually take on um, the role of uh, of the hero, you know, let's say. So they're going to play it first for, for laughs, and then later it's going to become more of their reality. I wonder if something similar might happen here. Well, I guess it all depends on how you play this game, because of course there's some options with, with Undertale. Options that there are not really in Final Fantasy. All right, good luck, darling. So you're going to get through this puzzle. We hack through the puzzle. Our first portion of the fight with Metaton. All right, but that was just kind of a, a practice round. And here we are. Deep in Hotland coming to the core little by little all right that metaton resort let's just get to the next battle here a lot of characters to meet the burger place the lounge all right, I don't want to drag this out too much I know there's a lot of dialogue we're jumping over here. The burger guy is one of the stranger characters in this game, I gotta say. Yeah. He's just a little bit scary to look at. Um, then he's smoking on. That is, of course, not allowed. Um, all these faces, very internet culture. Just a little bit much for me. Oh, we can go down the alley and meet these two girls that you mentioned. Um, Braddy and Kathy. They're going to tell us some inside information. Tell us about Alphys. Tell us about Asgore. And here's the core. Is this not where we fight Metaton? Gosh. That pit is not on my map. So magic is just a regular enemy here. All right, I really want to get to the Metaton fight. These battles become quite difficult. These puzzles become quite involved. Alphys is helping us as much as she can, but it turns out that she doesn't remember a lot of this, kind of like me. But we're getting close to the end of the core. I think this is supposed to feel like a last level of the game. 
Um, if you're into JRPGs, you know that late game, you tend to get some of this more technological sort of thing going on. So there's elements of fantasy, of romance, sci-fi. Here we go. Time to finally stop this malfunctioning robot. Get real. This was all just a big show, an act. Alphys has been playing you for a fool the whole time. As she watched you on the screen, she grew attached to your adventure. She desperately wanted to be a part of it, so she decided to insert herself into your story. Reactivating puzzles, disabling elevators, so she could save you from dangers that didn't exist. But she's not really your friend. So, is Alphys betraying us? During our quote battle, she will interrupt. She will pretend to quote deactivate me, quote saving you. She'll be the heroine of your adventure. Now, what do y'all think of this? Playing a role, trying to make it real? Surely not. No desire to harm humans. My only desire is to entertain. The audience deserves a good show. What's a good show? Without a plot twist. So some really interesting reflection on the activity of storytelling within JRPGs. I just think this is catnip. For me, this is amazing stuff. Metaton is a pretty beloved character of this game. Like we said, I haven't seen Metaton's face just yet. But I think there's a little bit more character development in the case of Metaton than in some of the other characters. So here we are. We're trying to fight Metaton. All right. There's a switch. Let's see what happens when we turn the switch. Spotlights. A second form. That can only mean one thing. The premiere of my new body. Some interesting guitar riffs. There we go. Metaton EX. Lights, camera, action. Talk about character development, right? Um, Totally different form, one that's able to do the splits, one that has a beautiful face. Kind of resembles a Michael Jackson. I don't know if that's intentional, uh, but that's what I'm seeing. I don't know about y'all. Anyone out there, thoughts on Undertale or Metaton? Now's the time, because we're wrapping up for today. Wrapping it up. So a lot of timing has to happen here. Metaton, what is there to say about Metaton, right? It's a fun battle. There's a pop quiz. There's some interaction through shooting mechanism, mechanics rather, um, but also, of course, interacting through language. That humor piece. Problem solving piece, puzzle solving. Just a cool, cool battle. There's a there's an essay writing portion here. I, I don't remember when that happens. I really want to see the essay writing portion. So Metaton's lost their arms. They've rewinded some of the battle. The show must go on. Pretty low HP. Well then, might seem like I'm dying now, but Dr. Alphys can always repair me. Still got to perform for human. You've been a great audience. So much for Metaton. But as he points out, we haven't actually defeated Alphys, the creator. Metaton. Hey, I can always build a different robot. Uh, why don't you go on ahead? I just need a moment. So in case you didn't get the hint before, uh, Alphys is really a sweetheart. Um, seems to have a thing for Undyne. Everyone likes Undyne, after all. 
um, obviously has some feelings here about the destruction of the robot Metaton, poor Metaton, just being entertaining after all, just doing what he was created to do. Um, we're going to have to call it a day there. We're getting close to the end of the game, as you can see. Uh, we'll probably be able to finish next time, I think. Um, just a couple of final battles here and uh, wrapping things up on this quote unquote neutral route. This is really a pretty violent route, I would say. Um, this person is choosing to do a lot of what we might call defeating enemies, you know, or not to put to find a point on it, uh, killing them. Um, but because this person spared at least one of the uh, main enemies, I think this is technically a neutral route. Um, and, and you know, if, if people aren't super interested in Undertale, you know, if we don't get a lot more interaction going um, in our next uh, conversation, that might be the last one we do about Undertale. We don't, we don't have to talk about differences between the different routes within the game. Um, there is a fair bit of content that's only possible if you spare, if you show mercy on some of the main uh, characters here. Um, so maybe we will just talk about that briefly. Um, but we, we don't need to like spend a lot of time on Undertale if it's not something that a lot of the audience out there wants. So, like We're here to entertain, yes, to inform, yes, um, but really, it's it's more about what I'd say, um, you know, your input, your thinking, your interest here. Um, so please let us know what kinds of things you are really interested in. What would you like to talk about? How can we best serve our audience of younger people interested in Tolkien and related subjects? Um, personally, I think video games are a really great way, but... I gotta say, if there's not a little more engagement in the next few one uh, episodes here, I think we'll we'll go back to books. Um, you know, I love me some books. Um, I am gonna be working on a review of this Legends of Localization book. So if you all have thoughts about it, if anyone out there has has read it, the Legends of Localization books, any of them really, um, whether it be Undertale, um, Earthbound, Mother Two, or I think Zelda is the other one. I don't own the Zelda one. Um, yeah, let me know. And if not, uh, we'll have to think about what topics, what books or video games we should discuss going forward here. Um, thanks again for joining me, everyone. I will see you next time.